So today, we're in Porto, Portugal, and we're gonna do some exploring. I don't really know what we're doing. Trey has it all planned out on his document on our phones. So, let's go. We're starting the day off with coffee at a local place called Calma Specialty Coffee Room. Calma initially caught my eye because honestly, the architecture looks pretty fantastic in here. It calls itself a coffee tasting room, and since we love tasting rooms for beer, we kind of figured we'd like to experience our coffee in the same format. This is no longer instant coffee that we're drinking. Ooh. Okay, so I actually taste the difference, which is surprising because normally my palate is so basic. We definitely overdid it, but now you know if you come here, you could probably split one of the flights. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I feel like you can get by with just one person on Hannah's flight, but with mine, it's definitely a two to three person type of situation. This is a lot of coffee, and for two people that haven't eaten breakfast yet, it was going to end badly. So we just ordered some sandwiches, but they have a great selection of food here, a lot of different variety. They have all the different types of cafe breakfast food. We've done as much as we can do. I also made the mistake of like not sipping the shot of espresso, but just straight to the head. <laughs> Mistakes. We are going to be seeing like into different dimensions. This is far and away a big league coffee experience. I'm glad we added walking after coffee because we just need to walk some of this off. We really I can't do. Be in a museum or anything right now. I am too excited to be here. <laughs> Bill House is one of the most popular areas of Porto, with Rua Santa Catarina centering the area. This street has every type of store you could ever want, as well as a market, but I believe this market's a bit more like a modern supermarket type of place. As you can tell, we've clearly not seen it yet. <laughs> While in the Bilhau neighborhood, we recommend stopping by Capella dos Almas. It's the perfect place to get a picture for your Instagram, however, you won't be alone. Hannah finally finished her coffee. I did. I know I'm making a gross face, and it was really good. My heart is like a cartoon so character. <laughs> Next level. Next up, we're gonna make a quick pit stop by Sal Bento Station. We'd heard about this place before we arrived, but accidentally stumbled upon it a few days ago while we were on a walk and knew that we wanted to show you guys this place. It's a 20th century train station, and it's like going back in time. The main hallway is tiled with 22,000 tiles spanning across the walls and ceiling. The tiles depict some of the most relevant scenes and moments of Portuguese history, and it's something that we highly recommend you stop by and see if you're ever in Porto. So we were gonna go climb that, but unfortunately it costs 12 euros A, and B, the line is insanely long, and we figured we could get some cool drone shots from around it and show you the same view in better quality than what we would be able to produce from up at the top of the tower. Now if you're like us and you either don't have a lot of time or you're not willing to spend the six euros per person that it is to go up the tower, we're in a green space right next to it and there seems to be a nice little coffee shop that you can get some drinks in, some refreshments, or just relax and enjoy the beautiful views of the tower. So this might be a budget friendly option for those of you on a budget like us. <laughs> Today has been a learning moment to say the least. Normally we have no problem getting in anywhere that we go, but now that it's the summer, there's a lot of people here and there are long queues, including the bookstore. It's called Laveria Bookstore? Livaria? We're not really sure how to pronounce it, but it's one of the oldest bookstores in Portugal and one of the most notable in the world. A common misconception and one of the reasons Livraria Lelo or Leo is so packed is because Supposedly there's a rumor that says J.K. Rowling wrote some of the early Harry Potter novels or drew inspiration from that bookstore for Hogwarts. She has said that that's not true. Also, it costs money to get into the bookstore, but you can use the price of the ticket to buy a book. This isn't nearly as important now as it will be later, but it's vital that if you come to Porto, you bring walking shoes. It's an extremely hilly city. 
is also so toasty. We have not filmed in 80 degree weather yet and all black, not the move. Now we weren't able to take you inside the other church, but we are gonna take you inside this one. This is the Porto Cathedral. This Roman Catholic cathedral dates back to the 12th century and is free to enter, which is great for us. This church was expanded to its present size in the 13th century, and the following century, the cloister was added in the Gothic style. However, late in the 17th and 18th centuries, the interior and exterior were changed to the Baroque style. The front of this church really stands out from the rest of the area, and for some reason, it kind of reminds me of the scenes from King's Landing in Game of Thrones. This city is pretty pretty. Also, I just realized we haven't even gone inside the cathedral yet. All this is splowing has made me hungry. We are going to Casa Guedes, which is near our Airbnb, so that's one of the reasons why we like it. But also, we went there yesterday, had a really good beer, had really good sandwiches. The real culinary experience kicks off tonight when we go to Cafe Santiago to get some Francesino, which is a delicacy here in Porto. And then we'll do a food tour tomorrow. Oh my God. I thought about getting the sangria, but a nice cold super bock is just what you have to get in Porto. Cheers. Last night I got the pork croquettes, but this is what I wanted to try. This is the codfish croquette. If there's one thing Sarah told us, shout out Sarah, it's that we had to try the grilled fish here. And although this is fried, I'm still excited to try the fish. This is incredible. I wish I had gotten like three of those. Going behind and say, yeah, very delicious. Yes, <laughs> very delicious. Thank you. Our waiter told us we had to try number 14, which is Chef Guedes. It's a different sandwich with pork, some caramelized onions, and port wine, which is a staple here, brie cheese, and arugula. It's amazing. I went a little bit more basic, and I just got the black pork, and I think it's like a braised pork kind of deal. I went simple. Well, it's just fabulous, but we don't really have anything planned from now until dinner time slash dusk. So we're gonna go back to our Airbnb, do a little bit of work, get caught up, freshen up a little bit, and be ready to go tonight. All right, we're back. We are on our way down to the Ribera District. This waterfront port was the center of town many centuries ago, and we've been wanting to visit, but honestly, we've been a little bit lazy to hike back up. You can probably already guess this, but Ribera translates to riverfront. The Douro River was once the center of trade in Porto, so you can imagine this area was once the true center of Old Town. Nowadays, it's a great area to catch a boat to see the city from the water, or if you want to try the many restaurants the area has. We were gonna take the funicular up on the other side of the bridge, but there happens to be construction on it right now, which we did not know. So instead we took this little drawbridge, I guess, across the bottom of the main bridge up top. We saw this tram going across and we were like, okay, well maybe that's a, uh, it's a way for us to get to the very top without having to climb up a bunch of stairs. 12 euros for both of us one way. It's not like as cheap as it probably should be, but it's not crazy expensive. We've been waiting like seven, maybe eight minutes, and we're now kind of at the front. It's not a long wait, and I think it'll be worth it. That goes some, so fast. That's some giddy up. I feel like I'm doing okay. Yeah, how do you feel? It's enclosed, I'm sitting down, it's not too terrible. Trip is coming to an end. Ooh, I'm scared. How's he, how do you coming feel? Coming in hot, dude. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Ooh, he's swinging in. That is definitely a worth it option if your mobility is compromised, obviously. But B, if you just want beautiful views of the city without having to stand and deal with the heat. We came over here because the best views of the city are from the top of the hill opposite side of the Louis I Bridge. This city looks beautiful around Golden Hour and you can't get a much better view than from Jardim do Moro. Jardim do Moro translates to hill garden, so it's basically a public park at the top of the hill. I had like these grand visions of beautiful shots with the drone, but this is the first city where the drone like gets attacked by seagulls. There were like, there were like eight of them just swarming it.
You know, we keep hinting that we're doing a food tour tomorrow, but we wanted to give you a little taste of what to expect. Cafe Santiago is one of the first places we heard about, and the food we're after tonight is called a French... French Senia. French Senia. The French Senia seems like the ultimate late night meal, and it's only a matter of time before Waffle House figures it out and adds it to the menu along with like the hash brown bowl that they have. I feel like we should have just skipped lunch entirely. These portions look huge. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Toast is still incredibly crunchy, and I don't know how they do that. I'm trying to get a bite. <laughs> yeah. It's like the ultimate breakfast sandwich with like a little bit of spice at the end. I got mine without the fried egg. Oh my god. It's so good, but I feel like it's an absolute battle to eat. Oh my gosh. So much, so much cheese. Be advised, this is definitely not a first date dish. It is difficult to eat and you will not look nice eating it. You just won't, I don't care who you are. So I recommend come with someone that you're friends with or your wife. Come with someone like that and uh, you'll have an amazing experience because the food is incredible. And speaking of food, we're gonna wrap this up here and we'll see you in a few days when we eat even more food. Also, if anything seems different, Hannah got a haircut. I did. Very warm. I don't like sparkling water. I'm already kind of shaky. It doesn't help that I probably had two cups of coffee before we got here, so that was a mistake. It's the fanciest McDonald's you're ever gonna see. This guy on the trumpet was just playing the chicken dance yeah, and now it's stuck in my head. Oh, saxophone. <laughs> One of the blowy instruments, the Did horn. You, were you in band ever? Yeah, I played the clarinet. Oh, I refuse not to go in this cathedral. We were not able to go into the library. It's free. This afternoon, later this afternoon, this evening. We're gonna go out this evening. Now time for the most terrifying part of our walk home. These guys side right there. Oh, a little boat. <laughs> Oops, now I'm zoomed in. <laughs> I'm having such a hard time. Oh no, oh no. Oh no, 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 no. This is the worst thing that's ever happened to me with food.